Hello there, Johannes Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting. And today I am doing a tasting of a 14-month-old whiskey. A 14-month-old whiskey that impressed me so much that I went ahead and bought some for myself. And I'll tell you a little bit about the story behind it, because I just got back from a trip to Kentucky and Tennessee, where I was doing a bunch of research for a whiskey brand who wanted to know their history. It's a very interesting history. At some point, I will share some of that with you. But I also wanted to hit some of the distilleries in Tennessee and Kentucky that I hadn't been to yet or hadn't been to in a while because I have two books that I am planning for this winter into the spring. One is going to be Whiskey Lore's Travel Guide to Experiencing Tennessee Whiskey, and the other one is going to be Whiskey Lore's Travel Guide to Experiencing Kentucky Bourbon, edition number two. So I want to update it. The book is now uh, about two and a half years old. By the time I put another version out, it will be three years old. And so time to visit some of these distilleries again, get a few in that I didn't have in there before. I mentioned them, but I didn't necessarily have any profile to tell because I hadn't been there myself. And the idea of these books is that I'm telling you my experiences at these distilleries to help you understand which ones you should go to. And by the way, the Irish whiskey book will be out November 22nd. I have firmly set that date. I had to push it another week because I my formatter for this book disappeared, just ghosted me. So I had to go find somebody else to do it, and I have somebody who's doing it, and they're doing a great job on it, so that book should be out by November 22nd. If you want to be on the launch team for it, then head to whiskey-lore.com slash signups, and you will have an opportunity to be on the launch team, and I am going to reveal, actually, on Thursday some of the whole process and, and all of that in the newsletter. So that's where you're, you're basically signing up for the newsletter there at whiskey-lore.com slash sign up. Okay. Don't want to turn this into a promotional video. I try my best not to do that um, when I am doing these tastings, but lots of important stuff going on. And like I say, really interesting. I got a chance to go to the Whiskey Thieving Distillery, which they sent me a note back after I had signed up for it. And I went, what distillery is that? And then I went, oh yeah, it's Three Boys Farm. So if you've been to the Three Boys Farm Distillery, it is now changing its name. And it's because what they're doing is they're allowing people to basically sample three different barrels and then you can bottle from one of those barrels. And it's a little pricey. It's like 25 bucks just to go in and do the tasting. And then basically they pull it straight out of the barrel with a whiskey thief, put it in your glass. You get a fine big sample because of course it's hard to control what comes out of that whiskey thief. And then their bottles of whiskey are, well, I mean, to get a full size bottle is going to be over a century in price. Uh, so it's not cheap, but, um, but they, you know, that is another distillery experience you can do along the bourbon trail. The one I went to that I'm about to share a whiskey from is Augusta Distillery. And for those of you that don't know what Augusta Distillery is, it is a distillery that's up on the Ohio River, looking across at Ohio in Kentucky, just north of Maysville. There are actually three distilleries you could go to in a short little uh, drive there. Old Pogue, which is the one that is filled with a lot of whiskey history. The Baker Bird Distillery, which is actually a winery that now has a distillery. And it's like right almost just across the street from uh, Augusta Distillery. And Augusta is a great little town, by the way. It is just kind of your... You, you know, Main Street, USA kind of town, but it's on the river. And what is it, the Jenny Lee? They have this, you know, car transport that goes back and forth between the dock over in Ohio and the one in Kentucky because there's no bridge to get across. You got to go all the way to Maysville to do that. So it is really very cool. I actually just, it was a beautiful sunny day. And 
and I just sat out there watching it. I got to town about an hour and a half early, and I would say I would spend a good hour sitting down there watching this little, looked like a tugboat with a like an aircraft carrier landing platform. Cars drive up on it, and the uh, tug actually switches directions. It's fascinating to watch. And so that's basically how I spent it. So I, I highly recommend going to Augusta and visiting this distillery. Now, this is a brand new distillery. I went there a year ago, and Ryan, one of the founders, took me on a tour through this old uh, factory that they are converting into this distillery. They got some great plans for it. And I thought maybe they would be more advanced here a year later, but they've basically taken one of the big rooms there and converted it into a tasting area. And so when you go in, you could get a chance to tour through and see all these different parts of the distillery. And then you get to sit there and actually do a, um, just like it, at um, whiskey thieving, you have the op opportunity to go over and they have three barrels. One was a one year, in my case, 14 month actually, and then a two year, and then a four year. And I left with a bottle of the four year, and believe it or not, I bought the 14 month. It was actually my favorite. And you're going, okay, so wait a second. 14 months, I mean, it hasn't really had enough time to interact with that wood. Well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> the distillate is good. And this is sourced distillate. They don't have their pot stills or their, their still system. I guess they're going to they'll probably do a hybrid still. I'm not sure how they're setting that up. I forgot. Uh, I need to check on that. But um, they don't have any stilling equipment in there yet. So this is sourced liquid. But I got to tell you, Ryan, he's the guy that's picking these barrels out. And he is doing it excellent job because I liked all three, but this one really stood out to me. And I got a chance to bottle it myself. So it's the same thing you, except in this case, I got to go in and pull the whiskey thief out and fill up my barrel. And I think they do that whiskey theming as well. But I mean, look at the bottom of this. See that stuff floating around inside of there. That is your friend and mine char. So in a way, this is still aging inside the, the bottle. And some people would probably freak out if they saw all of that char floating around in there, but it doesn't freak me out because honestly, it just shows me this is a non-filtered whiskey that just came straight from the barrel. So time to jump in, do a nosing and tasting on this. It's going to be a whiskey that's going to be hard for you to get a duplicate version of because However long that cask la lasted, they keep pulling stuff out of it. It's actually aging every day. So um, that's the thing about leaving it in a barrel. Mm. So nice herbally rye on this. This is a bourbon. And one of the things that I normally get out of a very young whiskey, depending on the distillate, is kind of a biscuity, yeasty kind of a of a smell, but I don't get that at all out of this. It's got some um, caramel in there, uh, a little bit of an alcohol smell coming in. <laughs> Why not? This is 118.8 proof, 59.4 proof, 14 months, bottled on 10.822. So by me, which is really nice. little bit of oak coming in there, which is amazing again. And you can see how dark that barrel is. They must be aging this or have aged this in some extreme conditions to get it to age as quickly as it has. Cheers. Mm. Very drinkable. No water added. Oh man. It's the toffee in this. It's the toffee. There's pepper on the finish. There's a little bit of that oak coming through. Thins out a little bit on the finish, but not so bad. 
I would worry about this whiskey probably if it were proof down. Ooh, and then a nice warm pepper just lays on the palate. It's not down here. It's just laying on the palate. Has some of those Irish whiskey kind of uh, experiences coming through on it and that it, it isn't giving me the Kentucky hug. And again, at that high a proof level, you would expect this to be very aggressive. It is not. I could drink it just like this. And that is what blew me away about this particular whiskey. So I am really looking forward to digging in later on into my bottle of four year. And I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, of water to this just to see. Actually, I probably could be more liberal about it than that. Maybe not that much. <laughs> just to see. The reason I have the company bottle here, by the way, is because that was also part of my trip. When I went to Tennessee, I got a chance to go to company distilling and they are about to come out with a cast strength version of this whiskey. And I like this whiskey, but it was a little mild for me. It's a weeded bourbon. It has a maple finish on it. And so I like the maple notes that come out of it, but they're very light. I got to taste the cast strength version. I'm looking for it. I'm going to look for that when that comes out because the maple was there and it wasn't a sweet maple. It was, I mean, it just was almost like, um, it was like Heath bar sweet. I mean, it, it just, it, it had enough dark notes in it that it really made it interesting. And so that's definitely one. To, so you get two reviews for one out of this. How about that? Oh, <laughs> wow, that woke up the alcohol <laughs> to get a blade up my nose. Wow, I may have come at it a little too aggressively. It definitely has increased the rye focus of the nose. The caramel has kind of lightened up a little bit. Mm. Definitely makes it even more drinkable. Kind of leaves a little tannin on the finish, actually. Yeah, I think I'm going to just drink this the way it comes out of that bottle because it's a very nice whiskey. 14 months just goes to prove age does not matter. It's what you want out of whiskey. What pleases your palate. And this isn't a whiskey that I necessarily am going to... Um, show off from a standpoint of saying, hey, this is amongst the greatest whiskeys of the world. No, this is how you show that whiskey doesn't need a lot of time in the barrel if the distillate is good and that, you know, you, you take the age with a grain of salt and that there's a purpose for this whiskey for me. Just like with uh, Johnny Walker Red, if I'm in the mood for butterscotch, I'm grabbing Johnny Walker Red. Is it the greatest whiskey in the world? Not really. It's not a bad whiskey. It's just the average whiskey. But it has a flavor note that stands out to me. And when I'm in the mood for that, I can grab that whiskey. And when I'm in the mood for that kind of rye meets toffee note, then that's the one I'm going to go for. If I want that maple note, I'm going to go get myself this company cast strength. And I will be very, very happy with it. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, feel free to share your thoughts below. Have you tried, have, have you ever had a one-year-old whiskey that you were like, whoa? I mean, I can name a couple. I, um, I definitely am really impressed with Balcones uh, Blue Corn Baby Blue. That is an impressive and very easy to drink one-year-old whiskey. Much lighter in color than this, as I recall. And so, again, that's what I'm wondering. This thing has been through some pretty quick aging. Please like the video if you uh, would, and um, subscribe if you'd like to watch more of these videos. And until next time, cheers and sláinte Mmm. Mmm. Really nice notes in that. The thing is... This is one of those that's really hard to put on a rating scale because, again, it's for the moment. 
And within that 14 month age, I would say this is an exceptional whiskey, but when talking about it in general, this is a good whiskey. It is a good whiskey. I almost give it a very good.